Hello everyone, thanks for um, popping by, much appreciated. Today um, we're going to be working on legs. The biggest problem I find people have is getting nice firm legs, something we all want, but when it comes to needle felting it's quite important. So this is the kind of shape, if you were doing the hair, that you'd be aiming for. So you've got a nice firm leg there and still move around, attach to the body and it just sits really nicely. What you don't want is this, this serious floppiness going on here. Floppy, saggy legs, no good. So today I'm going to show you how to avoid that. Same if you're working on any animal, um, the Herdwick sheep, the fox, any, any animal that you're working on, when you're working on the legs, they need to be quite firm because these are what are going to keep your animal up, especially if you're working on the sheep. With the hair, it just acts as stability and it just looks so cute and just sits there like this. So the wool that we're going to be working with today is exactly what you get in the uh, hair needle, needle felting kits and the Herdrick kits and quite a few of the others. Um, Jacob's, as many of you know, is one of my favourites. Really nice wool, natural, grey Jacob, quite um, firm, quite robust. It's got a really nice felt and it's really forgiving so it doesn't show a lot of needle marks at all. There's also um, a Jacob batting that you can use but I'll, I'll talk about that another day. But today we're just going to focus on what you actually would actually use if you had one of these kits and we're also going to make the legs in exactly the same way as I have done in the instructions. So in each of those boxes you get everything you need as well as all your, your kit instructions. So this really is a, is a complimentary video to go along with those kits even though everything's in the instructions, never had any um, problems with the instructions before but I just thought it would be really nice to, to add a, a few videos into the mix and especially to avoid this saggy legs. So we'll get started. The needle I am going to be using again is the one that I put in all the kits which is a 38 star you can use a 36, triangular is fine, it's all down to personal preference whatever you want to use. So we're going to make two legs to start with, the front ones, these, and once you've got the neck of this then all the other legs are the same, you just finish them off slightly differently. My first advice is to take two strips of wool and make sure that they're about the same size because it's much easier to get the legs the same size. It doesn't matter if one's longer or shorter because you can move the position up and down the body usually um, as you're covering it with something so don't, don't worry too much about the, uh, the length of the leg. Okay. So we've got our two lengths of wool here. You can work either on a rice um, pad that I'm working on or in the kits um, the foam, always put the foam in. It's a nice firm upholstery foam. You can work with one needle, you can work with two needles, if you're working on the rice mat, you can work with the punch tool, um, any, any way you prefer to work. I tend to use the, the, obviously the faster um, punch tools and the multi-needle tools just because I'm doing a lot of felting, but if you're just doing one project then the one needle is fine. The other thing you can do as well, is, which I quite often, is um, tape two needles together for faster felting. So it's just a little bit of sellotape, I've just got some clear tape on there, nothing fancy. Um, so what I'm going to do is, um, because the foam is in the kit, so I'm actually going to start on the foam to show you. So this foam is six inches long, so this is um, going to be for one of my hairs, the legs. So it's six inches long, so you've, you're just overlapping, you've just pulled a, you've pulled a piece off your length of Jacob wool top or roving as you may call it. And all I want you to do is just fold it in half. So now it kind of fits the length of your pad. And then fold over those wispy ends 
and take your needle and just start to felt it down. So you're creating a kind of oblong shape. I'm going to show you as well how to get a really thick base to the foot on this without actually having to add too much more wool. It's so much easier doing it this way. When you're doing this, you can actually pull in the sides if you want to neaten them, but don't worry about that. We're going to use our hands a lot to, um, to get this right. Peel it off gently, turn it over, and then do the same. Now this needle is just going through the top of the foam, no need, don't push it all the way through, it's, it's there just to support the base and protect furniture and the needle. So you can see now that is actually really starting to, to felt together quite quickly, I just love the process of needle felting. I'm a really laid back crafter so this craft suits me down to a T. And there's no wonder it's taking the craft world by storm as, as, a, as, a, as a hobby, as a pastime, as an art. Nothing has to be perfect. No tricky patterns, no wires if you don't want to use them, no sewing apart from maybe the eyes or if you want to sew on your own embellishment. So as you can see, that's come together ni nicely now. Now I'm just going to pop it on my pedal and I'm just going to speed it up. Just because obviously I don't want to bore you with the video. But there's no need, you don't need this. But like I said, if you are planning on doing a lot of animals, or you're doing a lot for gifts, um, then I would recommend these. They're not, they're not expensive. Right. So that's getting pretty tight now. So what we're going to do is... We want to keep one end loose because the loose end is going to attach to the actual body of the animal, whatever animal you're making. So what I want to do is, I just want to fold over the bottom and this is what we're doing to create the big sort of thumper foot of the hair. So just gently prod that down, put it back on the foam so you can see. It doesn't have to be neat, so you've just folded over bottom of that. You see where that line is? So this is actually going to be the foot of the hair leg and because we folded it over when we roll it round it's going to become a lot thicker. So I'll just fill that down a little bit more. Watch your fingers, be careful. Always keep this left hand or right hand for stability out of the way. It doesn't actually need to be anywhere near the needle. You can actually rest your um, your wrist on as well if your wrist is aching, or your arm is aching. It's 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 it. There's so many ways you can you can work around things. So there. Yep, you're thinking that's not going to be a leg, but it is. I promise. Now, lay it on your pad or on your rice mat. I'll show you on here because it's it's a lighter colour and roll that round really tightly. If it's not tight, unroll it and do it again. So as you can see. So really push that down. You'll push down into the foam or the mat, whatever it is you're using. If you've got a kit, it'll be your your foam. Hold it there with your fingers and then just gently go along. So that felt's in. Put it back on the foam again. It's a really rough shape. You're wondering how on earth that's going to come this really nice firm leg. But I'll show you. It's Once you know how, it's easy. And this is the part, I would say, that most people don't get right. Yeah, it's the most common mistake. And it's usually, um, it's two things, technique and time. The two T's, as I call them. You're rushing it, and you haven't quite understood the technique. So, I will show you. 
It's looking kind of nondescript at the moment and still, you know, very floppy, but that's okay. And then at the end, it feels thicker because that's where you've double rolled and this is going to be the foot. So just put that on the end of your foam, which will be pad, and this, put your fingers on the top, not at the sides, and just felt in by pushing the needle through and that way you will avoid your fingers and then just turn, keep rolling and felting. And again, if you've got a, a multi-tool, you can use that. These are really good as well when you're flat felting. This is amazing. If you're doing ears, love using this um, punch tool. It just speeds it up so quickly. I just wonder what that smell was and then I realised it was me. I put perfume on for a video. Don't ask me why. My husband just rolls his eyes. I've got pyjama bottoms on though. It's all right for the BBC, then it's all right for me. Okay, so here we go. This is what we've got. Not a lot going on. So this is where we really firm it up. Put it in your hand, in the palm of your hand, you keep the loose end loose. Because we kind of want that to flatten out when we attach it to the animal. Put it in your hand, you see there? And you roll really hard. It's good if you've got clammy hands. You roll really hard and that friction will mat and lock all those fibres together even more and this is how you get super super firm legs with no sags and no floppiness and really get it going your feet are feels really warm can you see the difference in that shape now and you've also got where you double folded it at the bottom there you've got a really nice wider part to it. So what we're actually going to do here now is we are going to just push that end in and sometimes when you do this you'll find a little crease at the bottom which is fine we can easily um, either felt that out or we can always put just a really thin layer of the Jacob on top at the end Just to neaten it up. That's the brilliant thing about needle felting is everything is pretty much fixable. The only thing you can't do is take the wool away. So um, earlier on I did a leg. Where's it gone? I can't remember. But it, um, it, it was too. It was thick. It was like a tree trunk. So that was uh, my bad for um, as my daughter was my teenage daughter would say for um, adding too much to start with. Not listening to my own tips and tricks. Number one rule, you can add, but you cannot take it away. So you see how that's really coming together now. You see that? And it all looks a bit fluffy, but again, we're going to put it in our hands and we're going to roll. And keeping that loose part just out at the top where your thumbs are, because you don't really want to felt that too much, because that's going to attach to the body. And you see how firm that is getting now is what you want and that is how you do a leg that doesn't need anything on because there isn't really any lines or joins but if there was all you need to do is just Pop a bit of loose wool around, wrap it around the bottom there, push it in, into the foam, make sure you wrap it tightly around. And that is it. Give it another roll. Okay, 
So I'm going to pause the video for uh, a while now. I'm going to let you finish making that leg and make a second one if you want to. And then um, when you've done that, switch video back on and I'll show you how to attach them and also make a little little bend in the bottom to give it that little um, that little bend where the, where the foot actually attaches. Okay, see you in a minute. And we are back. So I've made two legs. So you should have a couple of legs now, hopefully yourself. The first thing you'll notice with mine is they're different lengths. And I want to show you why this doesn't matter if one's longer or shorter than the other. Um, when we're doing the when we're doing the hairs especially, or if you're doing the sheep as well, um, you can just felt further in. It's um, it, it's so easy to cover up those kind of um, they're not mistakes really. It's just the nature of the wool, and because it's handmade, you can't make two things exactly the same, and that includes legs, not just the animals. First thing I'm going to do though is show you how just to create a little bend there. For the little, for the for the feet. So all you do is fold it over at the bottom to wherever you want the foot to start, and, and you'll feel it because there'll be a, a thicker part. Remember where we folded it over earlier on. So bend that over. Get your needle and then just push into the bend, just where it's bent, nowhere else. Pin at the side a little bit, and what that will do is create that foot. It's so simple. If you know how to do it, it's really simple. Same with the other one, don't worry that it's shorter. Again, find the where the thick part stops, bend it over, and just push your needle through that bend. It's quite firm, so be careful with your needle so you don't break it. Keep that needle straight. Do not bend the needle. It will break. These can last for months, but if you bend them, they'll just snap. And there we go. So we've got another leg. And then if it's squashed a little bit, you can just use your fingers to, to reshape it. So we've got two relatively similar legs. Okay, so you've got your hair here, as you can see. Now, here's a body I made earlier. It's just like a little cone I suppose because that's where the the head would go okay so imagine you got your head and what have you on so when you attach the body this is where I was talking about doesn't matter if the legs are different sizes what matters is that those feet sit flat can you see that flush with the bottom of the body that you've made, that's what's important because that is how it's going to sit in balance. And then all you do is you hold them on. You see how much longer this one is than this one? Doesn't matter. Just push that in and then come down to the lower one with your needle and then now holding on to the body and they want to be together and in the center because you can actually turn them you can actually turn them out and because you've left this loose wool at the top when you've actually finished felting them on and you can come a bit further down just to hold them you can turn them out and felt felt there felt there but that's what you've got so you've now got your two legs there and as with this one it really doesn't matter about this seam at the top, the join should I say, not seam, not sewing, um, because you're going to cover it with a nice fluffy chest. So don't worry about that, that's fine and if you've kept that um, wool loose at the top you can flatten that down into the body so it doesn't stick out like a big uh, bodybuilder's chest is what I would say and that is how you make legs and when you do the side ones for the hair they're just exactly the same but shorter and you're going to build them up in the hocks but that's 
you'll see that if you've got the kit um, the instructions I think there's 68 70 photographs with all the detailed written instructions all there in the booklets but this is just a little video to help you along um, there's also a basic shapes video and the next one I think I'm going to do I'm going to do a head next time same, just quickly show you here with the sheep. So when you put the sheep's legs in, let's say this one, well, some of the, mine was longer. What you can actually do is push in through the side of the leg and that actually shortens it because it pushes those wool fibres into the body of the sheep. And you can see that that is being shortened. There we go. And they're not supposed to be perfect. They're just little characters. So there you go. How to make legs. How to avoid floppy and saggy legs. And um, if you like this video and you want me to do some more, then if you're watching on YouTube, please hit the subscribe button and give me a thumbs up, which would be really, really super. Okay, see you next time.